The Pythagorean philosophy takes as a starting point for the universe a single, unique point that needs, or indeed generates, a second reference point to compare itself to. Because the second point is effectively a part of the first, they are linked, so joining these two reference points together, we arrive at a line of singular dimension. But how long is that line? How long is a piece of string? For that line to be measurable, it needs a third reference point to measure itself against. And of course, that third reference point within the same field establishes the length of the line plus a second dimension of width, creating a single planar field. From its own perspective, it has no height or depth until it can be viewed from another reference point, which by its nature creates solid. But again, how big is that solid? We still don't know how large it is until we use another reference point to rotate or mirror it. And it is that fourth reference point we call time, the dimension that the solid moves through. With the awareness of time comes volition and relative movement in space, which, by the way, with the reproduction of units from a parent, the ability to perceive and react to the environment, and the evolution of the unit in the direction of higher development have been cited as the four main qualities that typify living things. This then defines the apparent limit of the human consciousness, as at this stage humankind has no reference point to establish the shape of time itself, and is merely able to see it as a series of snapshots arranged by the brain as best it can in a linear fashion.